the good word, y'all. DKB here. So Packers president Mark Murphy conducted a recent interview, and it is confirmed Aaron Rodgers is as good as gone. And I wish that was the headline that was out there um, and the sentiment that we can all share. But it's not that black and white. But with that said, a lot of what has been spoken about in this gray area with Aaron Rodgers, where things have been, you know, oddly enough, hush, hush. Um, a lot of signs point to ultimately what we've heard, you know, maybe about a week ago. It is the New York Jets or retirement. It 100% seems like everybody in the Packers organization is ready to move forward with Jordan Love. And so when I think at some of the starting points, maybe things officially kick off, let's say, with the darkness retreat. Um, we get to the combine. We have radio silence from Aaron Rodgers. General manager of the Packers, Brian Gutenkunz, pretty much confirms the same. They've had no conversations. They've heard nothing from Aaron Rodgers confirming one way or the other what exactly they, uh, what exactly he wants to do. Um, and he did confirm as well that the organization is very comfortable with the idea of Jordan Love being the starting quarterback in 2023 and beyond. And they really want to peel back that onion and kind of see what the future looks like with the guy that they've groomed behind the scenes for three years um, while he's got a chance to essentially be mentored by Aaron Rodgers to whatever degree um, that that's been, even though drafting him in the first place seems to have been one of the biggest fractures of the relationship um, that a lot of people on the outside looking in would probably point to. We go from the combine to the official trade inquiry by the New York Jets, um, and we don't really hear anything after this, right? There was nothing confirming that, yes, Aaron Rodgers is on the trade block or we're open to seeing what a trade package looks like. The next news that we hear is a bit of conflicting information. Either Aaron Rodgers wanted to speak to the New York Jets or the New York Jets just flew out with Woody Johnson and company to go meet him. But what went unspoken in between that whole time is the fact that quietly the Packers organization had to have granted permission to speak with them otherwise this would be tampering in the <laughs> biggest most visible way possible so i do think that was odd that we didn't really hear anything there either um things like that don't really go unspoken for so we fly out maybe there was a conversation before woody johnson did this with the aaron Rodgers and company maybe not we go out we hear there's high optimism a lot of people felt excited coming back from that uh you know red-eye trip to california and then the next thing that we're hearing now is the president, Mark Murphy's comments about Aaron Rodgers. And he's essentially doubling down on a lot of what I felt like uh, the general manager was saying. And it really gives this air and this tone in a lot of these conversations that nobody is expecting Aaron Rodgers to be around uh, in the 2023 season. And, uh, you know, it, I don't think Aaron Rodgers will necessarily have a lot of say so to force their hand to say, I'm going to be here uh, and I will be starting, but it can help out our situation. So there were a couple comments um, that was put out there. Uh, Mark Murphy mentioned things like um, trying to find what he wants and what we want uh, and hopefully trying to find a win-win situation. If Aaron Rodgers truly wants to play, the Packers aren't going to be the Super Bowl winning organization that he can get that done with, right? Everything in regards to remaining with the Packers, I feel like will probably be from a nostalgic standpoint. Um, very few quarterbacks, and Mark Murphy mentioned this themselves, or players in general, finish out their entire careers with just one organization. And he even mentioned so far much as, um, you know, at in some capacity down the road, bringing Aaron Rodgers back and signing him to a contract and, you know, officially retiring him in his jersey number and all of these good things, um, which, you know, definitely gave me the impression that they were ready to give on, uh, move on. Um, Mark Murphy did get asked a question as well about kind of what's been going on with the trade talks. Um, he did confirm that permission was granted by the New York Jets. Couldn't get into anything beyond that, obviously. Um, but again, kind of going back, and I've talked about this a few times already, I think what we're looking at is really something very similar to the Brett Farr package um, that was, you know, given to Brett Farr. And it feels like the leverage from the Aaron, you know, the Packers is slowly dwindling, dwindling, dwindling down. And at this point, I wouldn't say it's unrealistic that maybe we're looking at second or third round pick territory. 
Um, maybe a singular pick uh, if it's going to just be like a second or something crazy like that. Um, but right now, it definitely gives the feeling that the New York Jets are in the driver's seat in this conversation. And so if the Packers are going to win in any capacity, I think it would be something where they have to settle on maybe like a, a third round pick. The New York Jets are taking on, let's say, like 90 percent of the contract that Aaron Rodgers is going to, uh, you know, put on the books before we end up working out some kind of restructure. Um The most interesting part about this brief interview, which, you know, lasted maybe two or three minutes, though, with Mark Murphy was that at the very end, he was asked, do they see Jordan Love as the face of the franchise, uh, you know, quarterback superstar that can lead this organization to greatness as they've seen with two quarterbacks over, you know, a, a 30, 40 year span. And there was no hesitation. It was a pretty much a resounding yes. Um, he feels they're ready. The general manager feels they're ready. I would assume by default, the well, floor feels like he's ready. And again, they've been grooming this man behind the scenes for three years. They felt more and more comfortable. You've seen better performances from Jordan Love on the field each and every time uh, that he's had a few moments to go out there and try to strut his stuff. And Aaron Rodgers has said himself he doesn't want to be part of a rebuild. He's really the odd man out uh, when you thought, think about his comfortability within the offense, right? Uh, he doesn't have his guy, um, Dante Adams. Uh, <laughs> Devontae Adams anymore. Um, he, we're looking at Randall Cobb with one foot out. We're looking at Bakhtiari with one foot out. Um, and so really, you know, he looks around the locker room. There isn't a whole lot of chemistry that's necessarily immediately, uh, uh, you know, available there for him. It took him maybe till around like week 12 to get comfortable within the offense and trying to get people going, operating a deep passing attack. Um, and so I, I would say if he wants to play, he's really going to pack it up and move. New York, yes, he's with some young guys, but we've already proven that we have some guys that could be near the top of the league, if not the top of the league. Garrett Wilson putting up 1,100 plus yards with terrible quarterbacks. Elijah Moore, we've seen what he did in Zach Wilson's rookie year. You can be hyped about Maybe he finds a way, uh, along with Zach Azani and his coaching staff, to somehow finally unleash Denzel Mims. You imagine that, uh, you know, CJ Uzama and uh, Tyler Conklin will be able to ball out a little bit more behind a revamped offensive line. The offensive line will improve. Brees Hall is going to have a field day against uh, boxes that are, you know, four or five uh, men instead of seven and eight. Um, and so it just is it's a good vibe all the way around, you know, and then not to mention we have all of the young guys uh, across the team that make up the core of this uh, group trying to recruit Aaron Rodgers from Quentin Williams to Will Park, Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. Everybody understands this opportunity that's in front of them. So um, let me know what your guys' chances are um, on Aaron Rodgers joining the New York Jets at this point. I want to say cautiously, I'm going with like an 85% chance he joins us. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it there. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are if you've watched the Mark Murphy interview already. And uh, again, drop your percentage you think he joins us. And I'll catch you guys again. Peace. Yeah.